<clears throat> all right guys so today i want to take a look at this cobalt 24 volt max chemical sprayer it is the item number 17749244 uh forward slash 1930594 and it is the model number ksp 1024b-03 now here's the uh, instruction manual and that's why the item number they show two different numbers there that's why I included both of those now this is their two gallon cordless chemical sprayer kit now the specifications per the box is the hose length is 54 inches flow rate 0.14 gallons per minute maximum tank volume 2.11 gallons and um, it I'll, I'll show you what accessories come with this now before I go any further I do want to say one thing that disappoints me about the cobalt is lack of being able to buy replacement parts now I did call and inquire about what if the hose got damaged or you know the handle uh, or, or the wand end and uh, anything else and they said that uh, when I called cobalt they said there was no orderable replacement parts so as you see it here this is the core unit you have the the, the base which you put your uh, fluids in the top piece which control which has the pump switch in your battery compartment then you have the holes for the product to go through you have the handle with the switch and then you have the wand you do get the instruction manual you get the battery charger manual you get the battery manual you get their 45 watt charger you get a 2 amp hour battery And you also get a strap for it, shoulder strap. This will operate on either the extended run or the ultimate output batteries. So let's look at that handle arrangement separately. This end is what the wand would screw on to this end the holes would attach to here's the wand that screws on to the end of that handle and the tip is adjustable for the fan spray And it telescopes out so you can unscrew this and pull it out and here we will attach the wand to the handle Now this is the hose that you get. It is not a standard end. 
this the, the threads here, the diameter, it's not standard to anything that I could find. So hence my questioning if you did need the holes with cobalt, could you order a new one? Here you'll see the holes attached to the end of the handle. If we want to take a look at this handle, this has some kind of an adapter that's even screwed onto it. But this came with the handle. It's got an O-ring in there. Here we're going to attach the holes to the outlet of the sprayer unit. So now if we take a look at the build of the uh, sprayer, we'll see underneath here, underneath where the hand would grip, we have some the rubberized surface. Everything else is whatever uh, composite material that cobalt uses in all their housings for their tools. And down below the tank is semi-clear so that you can see the quantity of liquid that's still in there. Here you can see the handle, the way it's built, nests really nice in the top part of the handle notched out there to accept this portion and you just set it in there like that and you can store it just like this and not have to worry about uh, taking the handle or the wand off here's your on off switch right now pushed forward to the front of the unit it's off push to the back side of the unit this is the run position here we have a graduated cup so that if you're mixing in any ratio you could use this to mix the bottom contains your gasket to seal this area and then this of course is your filler neck to put your your liquids in On the back side we have the compartment cover in which your battery will go into. And uh, let me grab, it does come with a 2 amp hour, let me put my 4 amp hour ultimate output. And as you can see the bay is deep enough to go with the, uh, I'm sure the 6 amp hour. Now there's no liquid in, in the tank at the moment. I had water in here and I, I took it out. I will be doing a demonstration. But with no liquid to pump out and you turn the handle on, you'll just keep hearing the pump. Now, now let me turn it on. As you can see on both sides of the unit, on the tank, there are latches in which you can separate the pump housing from the tank unit. And this would be your suction holes that they give you. It feels like a silicone, it feels like a nice silicone and it's got a uh, like a not really a filter but uh, it's got a very small ends in there to where if you had any large particles it would not suck them up I would highly recommend though when you're putting any product in here 
that you do make sure that it's clean that any container you're using is clean so you don't get any debris in the pump housing and then here's the tank and to put this back on very simple now what I'm going to use this strictly for is simple green and spraying it as a cleaner when I'm using it on my car the siding of the house the engine compartment I love simple green I use a 50 50 mix one gallon water one gallon simple green it's a beast it works great so this will not have any pesticides in it what I have guys is I have two gallon containers and I like to pre-mix it and then pour it uh, into the sprayer uh, previously I had a hand pump sprayer I'll be using this now but uh, so I'll pour the uh, either water simple green in first mix them both right in here and uh, then I would pour it into the sprayer and then we will be pouring this into here now there are some safety warnings on page 7 of the manual uh, before using any pesticides or other spray materials in this sprayer read the label on its or original container thoroughly and follow its directions some spray materials are dangerous and should not be used in this sprayer as they can damage a sprayer and cause serious bodily injury and obviously it says do not use in the rain and so forth here on page 8 of the manual uh, know your sprayer very important you want to familiarize yourself with that but it does say do not use this sprayer with wood sealants or wood stains so you can't use any kind of volatile materials uh, so uh, strictly pesticides you know you don't want to use this for sealer for your wood deck or anything like that and it says this sprayer can be used to spray the following thin liquids herbicides pesticides and fertilizers as well as mild liquid cleaners with pH levels between 5 and 10 um, and, and, and obviously you're supposed to use thin water like consistency uh, liquids so that goes without saying though and we're going to go ahead and fill this up with the 50 50 mixture of simple green one thing I like to use this is just uh, strictly a clean brand new oil funnel anytime I have funnels they're used for the product or for I'm very picky that way I don't allow any other product to be used and so this will be used strictly for the simple green when using it in here but I like this kind of a funnel you'll see because I don't want to get sloppy with it and pouring it in here is going to be almost impossible so by using something like this, it allows the liquid to go in. You can go in slow. It's got plenty of room to splash around and not get on your sprayer. Yep, got a little bit carried away there and I should have been a little more careful when that's going in there like that and it's going in there like that it foamed up so I should have went a little bit slower all right guys so now we've got liquid in there so remember I said earlier you could hear the pump keep running and running so now when I turn the switch on you heard the pump run until it feeds uh, your liquid your product into the holes then it'll stop but it's very important as the manual says 
when this thing is on, whether you're using the sprayer or not, your pump is still running using battery voltage. So let me turn this on. Let me feed some. Okay, I had to feed some uh, product into the line. So now let's turn it back on again. The line's full. You don't hear anything. Now I'm not going to adjust the nozzle end because I've got it set the way I want it, uh, the spray. But I'll go ahead and turn the unit on and hit the sprayer. And it's hard to see. It's it's hard to see the um, uh, probably on film the the, the uh, fan. But I've got it set exactly the way I want it, so we're not going to change that. But now, again, when you turn it on, you hear the pump run. When you turn it off, you don't hear it, but the pump is running, as I said earlier. So don't don't if you're not going to be using it, make sure you shut that off. One other thing I want to demonstrate is being that this is a pump and not pressurized with your normal pressurized. Uh, sprayers that you have to pump with the handle if a gasket goes out it's it's gonna leak and you can't use it so I'm gonna turn this thing on now watch this I can take this cup off even though it's got a gasket so that that's on there obviously if you tipped it it won't leak but with that opening like that this will still spray So well, that's a good thing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and power wash my car, and I'm going to use this 50/50 uh, mixture of Simple Green. I'm going to put it on my rims, and uh, basically I'm going to go over the whole car with this. But I'll just show you then how this is going to work. Now what I like about this, this gives really, really good coverage quick. Now, one of the things that I noticed, and I couldn't get it adjusted, I didn't think that well, is if you're spraying pesticides, you want it at a small area. And I couldn't get this to go down in a real small area uh, with a finer spray, uh, but it'd be more of a pointy spray so that's just something you've got to look at and see uh, what is to your taste but again like I said I'm not going to be using this for that purpose but I thought I would point that out so I think this does a great job of really covering quick for this uh, solution for cleaning the vehicle really a whole lot quicker than that hand sprayer so I'm really happy with this. I've used this uh, previous, but I thought I'd do a demonstration. But like I said, I really do like this sprayer. Okay, guys, you'll recall that in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that there were no parts that were replaceable, uh, such as what you see here. The hose, the uh, controller, hand controller, and the wand. So, I decided to try something just to see what would happen if this went to heck and I needed to, you know, I still wanted to use my sprayer, but obviously it's useless without this. So, I came up with something and I thought I would share it with you just in case you'd be interested if this happened down the road. And again, I'm certainly not saying that it will. But you never know. Again, you could step on this. Uh, the dog could chew on this and damage it. And in such a case, then what would you do? You would need to get yourself a sprayer unit. I decided to buy this one here. Okay, here you see you can buy these universal wands was shut off for $17.98 Husqvarna
but I found it's cheaper just buy a small sprayer get the whole damn tank and nozzle and you can just retrofit this to fit the cobalt here you see the result of what I did then and I'm gonna show you how I did it now just because I did it one way doesn't mean there's not another way to do it you just think out outside the box and being the fact that I bought this particular uh, sprayer that came with this particular uh, wand and handle uh, I had to adapt it to that so one of the key things is going to be up in here how you adapt it out here is going to be up to you so I just do this again to maybe uh, uh, show you what I did and if the time ever comes that you need to you can still make this a workable sprayer so let's begin at the beginning once I pulled this handle unit out of the new sprayer I had to cut this end off so this would have been the end that you see over here would have been connected I just cut as close as I could this obviously would go into the sprayer that I bought and this would be the pickup tube then so that's the first thing I did the next thing was the threaded outlet that is on the cobalt unit as I said it was some kind of a bastard size couldn't find anything that would thread into it one thing I did see that it was just about three quarters of an inch OD on the threads as far as uh, it was just a hair bigger so that got me to thinking so I have uh, this hose from another project uh, quite a bit of it it's a Daco three quarter inch ID 200 psi burst strength and um, so I cut a portion of that to a given length that I determined and that was going to be the interface that goes from here to whatever I was going to use on the other end now the one thing I had to do was uh, take a utility knife and cut a chamfer on an angle around the inside all the way around the perimeter as a lead-in so that it would be easier to then put on to that so now by doing that I was able to hold it on here and rotate it clockwise until it literally threaded on as far back to the housing and it was that simple then I took an appropriately sized hose clamp and just clamped it down don't have to go over over overboard on it and just clamped it down here to just give it enough so that it will not come off now guys here is where you depending on what you buy in the diameter of the um, hose that goes to your wand you may be different than what I have here so I'm going to show you what I did the hose is what gets you to the next step and then I'll show you what I put right here now that item is a nylon barbed fitting three quarter inch by three quarter inch so you have three quarter inch barbed for holes which is for three quarter inch ID holes and this end is threaded for male holes thread so male holes thread is what I used in this case it's different than pipe thread now I bought this at uh, Lowe's you can get stuff like this anywhere but this particular item I bought at Lowe's now for my situation I wanted to have obviously you had to have the three quarter inch barb fitting uh, hose that was on here that goes into the hose on the other side I chose the, the uh, male pipe threads because I used this brass uh, it's a half inch hose barb to uh, three quarter inch female hose thread and this is what that looks like now this particular one happens to be three quarter inch hose barb because uh, I don't have another half inch and then on the other side you see these three quarter inch garden hose fitting threads and there's your uh, gasket the rubber hose gasket and that's 
basically two pieces here. You've got the female end, then you've got the uh, hose barb end, and what holds that in there is the uh, gasket. And then when you screw that on, gasket pushes up against there, tightens it down, and seals it up. The next thing I had to do was adapt this to the half inch. By coincidence, this slid right inside the bore of the barb thread. So think of it as being this, and that would that slid right inside that bore, and it was snug. Uh, and what I did though was put a three-quarter uh, wrap around of uh, uh, black electrical tape to give it just a little more. Stuck that in there. Uh, put it to the back side of that, which would have been to the back side as you see here. Yeah, let me take this out. So I, I put that to the, I, I stuck the hose to the back side so it was flush with the back side of that hose barb. And um, that was that. Now once I did that, I tried it and it worked great. But I didn't want any possibility of this pulling out while I'm using it for some odd reason. So here's what I did. I took black electrical tape, wound it tight around the hose barb and back into the hose that you see here, and then just took two very small hose clamps and put them on as you see there. And you don't want to go real tight here, you just, just snug with this, and then I tighten this down onto the brass and just just a little bit snug and now there's no way that that is going to pull out of that fitting all right guys I know you're gonna to want to see this demonstrated so I'm out in my garage right now it's really windy and raining out so I thought I would just spray this into the box of the uh, sprayer unit that I bought to, to get this uh, in and so now we'll turn it on and we'll go ahead and spray it inside here And then you can adjust the end here. I got it kind of tight. You can adjust the end. Now being inside here, you don't see the fanning of it, but... And as you can see, there are no leaks out of this. So I'm pretty happy with this retrofit. One other thing that I want to show you guys that I did not show, and that was the shoulder strap and where it anchors into. So you have a spot here, and you have a spot right back here so that allows you to if you're doing any extensive spraying you can have a little more comfort instead of holding it now as I said guys there's more than one way to do this job this is the way that I did it it's very simple and uh, it works. So if this ever did happen, now I'm going to go back to the original wand. But I now know that it is workable to uh, come up with a workaround in case you do have issues with the original wand and holes. So I hope that was helpful. And I also hope you don't ever have to do that, but it's here just in case to show you.